Who you got? I'm going to go with a coach. I'm going to go with the defensive coordinator of the Kansas City Chiefs, Steve Spagnuolo. I think it's very important that Chiefs finish this season the way they have just led to this week. They've got to take care of business in Week 17, lock up that three seed, and then go into the playoffs and do their thing. I think that defense for the Chiefs is the biggest difference. Fuel your hustle. Let's see a shutout because the last five <laughs> weeks, this Chiefs defense has stepped up and has been fantastic. If you look at the numbers they put up, it's better than any other team in the league. And this is what held them back last year from beating the Patriots in that big AFC championship game. So, Chiefs, you got a big game this weekend. They're allowing the Chargers. fewest points per game since week 10. They're the team, and it's because of all the new additions, but also that man right there, Spags. So you got the Chargers, you got Phillip Rivers. They are coming into your building. Yep. Shut out. Shut out shut the out. Chargers. Put your foot on their throats, and you go oh. into the playoffs, and you say, okay, we're ready to be that team. Either they get the bye if something crazy happens with New England, or they don't, and they have to host a playoff game in that wild card round. Either way, we know Mahomes is there. We know that Kelsey's going to show up. If this defense can finish the way they've done the last few weeks, I think they might be the toughest out in the entire AFC mm. field. I don't see an Anthony Lynn Chargers team showing up and mailing it in, though, either. You're right. I mean, that Chargers right. team. The Chargers team has a crazy thing where they're about to become one of the few teams ever to have 3,000 yard receivers. They're right there, and they might finish 5 and 11. But they got firepower. It's wild. Isn't that nuts? Yeah. Yeah. But it's not the same team. Like, even last year, like, the Chargers went into Arrowhead and beat them. There's and none of that, right? None now. of that it feeling feel like with it. the LA Chargers. Not to mention last game for Phillip Rivers in a Chargers jersey. Who knows? For now. For now. Who knows? What we got, Burleson. Uh, for me, I'm thinking about this whole hype around Marshawn Lynch, right? And it's people like us on TV that get everybody excited. It's Marshawn. He's back. It's beast mode. He hasn't played in forever, but it's just something about seeing him in a jersey, that limo tint visor, yep. that 2-4 running down and running through people's faces. But if you're the San Francisco 49ers, aren't you sitting back saying, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. We run the NFC West. Literally. We run it because we have the best running backs in the game. I mean, it started with Breida, and then you had Coleman, and then Mostert comes in doing his thing. So if you're this group of running backs, right, mm -hmm. that's headed up to Seattle, mm -hmm. and you know that the fanfare is going to be excited, you're facing a good D-line with Bobby Wagner anchoring the linebacker core, and you know pretty much every fan that's watching that game, even some Frisco fans, are more excited about seeing Marshawn Lynch than they are about seeing you, the group of running backs that collectively have been the best group in the business. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that motivate you a little bit more? So talking about fuel your hustle, this is pure gasoline right here. They need to go out there and put their foot down. Now, as a fan, I would love to see both groups have a day. But I feel like this running back core for the San Francisco 49ers has to feel slightly disrespected that all the hype is about a dude that hasn't played football in forever yeah, when we've been hype. running the game all season. Either way, it's going to be a tremendous yeah, watch for us fans. Striggs has been big on the Fred Warner hype train, one of the most <laughs> underappreciated players. If you want to be appreciated, like, enough of that Marshawn hype. Wrap that dude up. You know what I mean? You got a shot right now. Go get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to fuel a guy who's really big this weekend, Ryan Tannehill, quarterback of Tennessee Titans. And just, just some real talk here. If you are a periphery NFL fan, maybe just in season, not totally live, breathe, eat football, here's the Ryan Tannehill dossier, how you look at Tannehill. These are the facts. Ryan Tannehill, you know this. He was a receiver in college. He was drafted ahead of Russell Wilson. He was with the Dolphins for a while, and he was decent. And Ryan Tannehill, the internet, thinks he has a really attractive wife. That's like the, the hits of Ryan Tannehill. That's his reputation, those things. But this is what's fascinating. This is a crossroads for Ryan Tannehill this week. And you go one of two ways. You can add that to say, God, remember that he went to the Titans and he took them to the playoffs? That was incredible. No one saw that coming. Or you can say, I think he ended uh, up on the Titans and he lost to his division rival twice in three weeks and missed the playoffs. Mm. Ryan Tannehill's going one of those directions today. It is in a season of wildly unlikely stories with, with ducks and all sorts of crazy people and Minshews playing quarterbacks. Ryan Tannehill leading the Tennessee average Titans to the playoffs in Week 17 would be my favorite one, but he could easily fall. Rewrite it this weekend, Tannehill. You can change the whole deal here. Ooh, I am just as excited about... We're gonna, I'm going to go back to your game about okay. Marshawn Lynch is you guys. What he brings. If you're a member of the media, if you're an NFL fan, you missed him, you want him back, and you love that. I think the, I don't like overhyping anything, right? So I don't think 
putting that pressure all on his shoulders needs to happen. The Oikos triple zero pressure and fuel needs to be on Russell Wilson. I understand that for the past two years, the foundation of this offense has been to run the ball with Dwayne Brown, with Chris Carson. And it's worked for you for the most part. They're out and so are their backups. You add Marshawn Lynch, I think that that's great. However, you're playing a team on Sunday night that is probably the most complete team in the NFL, arguably the most complete team. And you have the 26th ranked defense. Your run game is shot. We don't know how Marshawn Lynch is going to look. You're the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. You have had some really close games, some really stupid losses. Like, this is the time to put the entire team on your shoulders, Russell Wilson, and right the ship going into it. Because momentum, my friend, is not on your mm. side. They have mm. lost two of their last three games. You can't lose three of your last four games going into the playoffs. I don't care what seeding you are. I don't care where you're playing or what your buy situation is. Okay, that Cardinals loss is still inexplicable it's, to me. It's last ugly. Week, home against the worst-ranked pass defense in the entire NFL, and... And DK Metcalf didn't have a catch. Russell Wilson didn't do anything. And Brett Hundley in the second half ran all over, Adam. all over that defense. It's hard for me to come in and say, Seahawks, after that's the but last But then Russell call. Wilson. I know. Right? You think, oh, but, 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 26 inch defense, no run game, bring you back a 33 year old running back. How's it going to look? No Dwayne Brown. But it's Russell Wilson. Yes, yeah, Russell Wilson. And they, they brought in Turbin, of course, and the, all yeah. the hype is around Marshawn Lynch. But all it takes, all it takes is Marshawn Lynch to bust off one big run. I'm not even talking about a 90-yard TD. I'm talking about a solid 16-yard run. You know what that does? That takes those linebackers for the 49ers. Just peek a little bit. Just stand a little bit closer to the line scrimmage. You know what that does? It takes those cornerbacks and that safety back there to take one step up when Russell Wilson draws that ball fake, and then he can hold that ball up and deliver it to his pass catch. How is he different from Car Chris Carson? Like, what is he going to do that Chris Carson wasn't doing because they – Chris Carson was out there when they've been losing. What does yeah. he provide? But I mean, losing, thats it's all relative. They still had a successful season. Mm -hmm. They dropped Great a couple season. of games. Yeah, so if you, if you look at, you can pick, I can pick, uh, you know, a Saints loss and say, this is what's wrong with that. I can pick the Patriots losses and say, look at what they lost to. But I, when it comes to Seattle, if Marshawn Lynch anchors that run game, and I'm just talking about solid runs, fall four for three, four yards, okay. and bust off a 15-yarder, it just opens up the play action. The play action pass for certain teams in the playoffs, like the Vikings and sure. even 49ers, Packers. Seattle, Packers, like it's a big part of Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. The play action is a huge part of their offense. The only, re only way that it works is if your running game is strong enough to fool the defense. It's all, it's all deception. And the reason that the Seattle offense hasn't been flowing is because teams haven't been deceived. So what are they going to do? Sit back, some other wide receivers, and make it difficult. I Marshawn just ran over everybody all game. I want to see him. Can I see? Can I ask for him and Bosa what? just to meet once? You want Marshawn and Bosa to meet? Yeah, because I think it'll happen. I kinda, it kind of feel like it's like a Bo Jackson kind of Boz feel a little yeah. bit to me. Any shot that Marshawn shows up and is washed. Or it could be Steve Atwood. 232 yards, two touchdowns, and one pick. Marky Free will be getting his first start since then, Sunday for the Ravens, and it so happens to be against the Steelers. Symmetry, people. Lamar Jackson will be watching from the sideline as Baltimore has already grabbed the top seed in the AFC, but the Ravens will be going for their 12th straight win. Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin on facing RG3. You know, we're not breathing a sigh of release, relief, if you will, in terms of quarterback mobility its impact on the game, and also the design run element of it. Uh, we we, we got to keep keep our nose down and do a really good job of preparing in that way if we want to minimize that element of play. Well, Tomlin is going to stick with Devlin Duck Hodges at quarterback. Actually, Tomlin has no choice as Mason Rudolph is out. The rise of the Duck Dynasty saw him go 3-0, but the fall of the Duck Dynasty saw him throw six picks with a passer rating of 41.7. Devlin says his teammates still have confidence in him, telling him, quote, still be you, still be Duck. Well, the Panthers interviewed Mike McCarthy last week for their head coaching vacancy, and we know one other interview planned, that being with interim head coach Perry Fuel. He told reporters he will interview for the job on a permanent basis, but no official day is set yet for when that will happen. Fuel saying he's focused right now on trying to get his first win as interim head coach. The Panthers mired, of course, in a seven-game losing streak. And it seems that Perry Fuel's name is one that we've heard a lot in coaching circles, especially in recent years, Shriggs, when it comes to these coaching vacancies. Well, there's going to be a lot of talk about a lot of coaches. Perry might be one of them. 
But I'm going to go into another one in a segment we call Meet This Man. Do you guys know who that is? Do you know this guy? Um, I do not. Coach Rule. This man right here is the hottest coaching prospect in the world of football right now, college and pros. His name is Matt Rule. He's yep. the coach of the Baylor Bears. And if your NFL team is looking to hire a new head coach in the coming days, I promise you this man's name will be linked to the job. That's not Nick Saban. That's not your.